Hey guys, how's it going? So, probably just over a week ago, I made a little video called Make Currency Scarce Again. It's basically a critique of the monetary systems we've got going in the West these days. And they talked a lot about the problems, you know, of the current system. And you know, there wasn't much about, you know, how to solve it because it's a really big topic and I didn't really know enough. Anyway, I've read a few things online and offline and and yeah, so I just thought I'd start a, do a new video. Um, and yeah, what prompted this was I read a book called Shattered Consensus. And it was written by, what's the guy's name, James Pearson. Right, so he reckons that there have been... Uh, three basic consensus in, in the history of the US. So you had from Jefferson to the Civil War, you had the consensus that America should be like a, an agricultural society um, and expand towards the West. And you, once that didn't really work anymore, you had the Civil War and then America industrialized. So it was an industrial country, industrializing, manufacturing, protection, trade protection and so on until the Great Depression ended that uh, and then we've basically been we've we've probably the consensus probably shattered at the GFC but since the Great Depression till, till the GFC was the a consensus based around what would you call it, it it's Keynesian poly, uh, economics you know the government should try and control interest rates, um, sorry, inflation, and aim for full unemployment. Um, full employment, not full unemployment. But yeah, so, yeah, this is the current consensus. Started at, at the Great Depression. People had to try and figure out how to get the economy moving again. And it seems like, you know, it wasn't, it's not like a clear line in the sand, but things gradually, gradually, moved in, in a direction to where we are now and it's not even conscious design you know but it's like Keynesian money th uh, monetary policy where the government th through the use of the central bank must regulate the economy right um, and so you had you had the Bretton Woods agreement which tied the US dollar um, to gold and then all other currencies to the US dollar and that fell apart basically because that I don't think the Yanks had enough gold to to guarantee the reserves of money they had um, and then yes yeah, so that fell apart what in the early 70s under Nixon who was a Republican but yeah so that fell apart and then you just had these fiat currencies and since then basically money creation like when the when a bank makes a loan it just creates that money as, as a bank deposit and now that you know money is digital it's electronic you could say like you get paid two thousand dollars a month whatever it is you don't draw that all out in cash right it goes straight into your bank account maybe you draw two hundred dollars out a month or i don't know but you see what i'm saying most of your money is just digital yeah and so that's how you know the central bankers regulated the economy as they said interest rates um and then the banks when they make all these loans uh, they just create money, so it becomes a deposit in your account. But the the commercial bank, say your Westpac or your ANZ or whatever, has to balance its books. So it does that by borrowing money from the uh, reserve bank, uh, from their cash reserves, which it can create and will always, basically always guarantee that all commercial bank demand is met with reserves. And... The bank sets the rate at which it'll lend that money out. So that's how it control things. Um, yeah, so basically what caused the GFC was uh, there was basically too much money creation for, you know, home loans, people buying homes. Um, and basically credit just slowed. And because credit was such a big part
part of the, your GDP that like a, a slowdown of say a third in your a slowdown of a third of your credit will come across as basically like a five percent reduction in GDP, and all that's happened is less lending, right? Less money creation. So as soon as you you know, currency is not as if your currency is not scarce and just can be created as uh, bank deposits whenever a commercial bank makes a loan. You're gonna create a bubble gradually, and that's you know it's pretty good while people are maximizing profits. But then you get into a situation where the bubble pops. Your liabilities are still you know for asset purchases are still at the original height, but the asset values dropped. So people get into a mindset, but you know, like the real economy suddenly is all about minimizing debt rather than maximizing profits. So, yeah, it's quite hard to explain, but like if you do, if you work, you produce something, right? You get paid, and then you can go out and consume the efforts of other people, right? So I grow bananas, and then I can go and eat apples. So what's being produced is being consumed. But now with money creation, there's all the money that people earn and is competing with people with money that has just been put into people's bank accounts to fund consumption. Now obviously there isn't necessarily a huge crossover because if you're getting a loan to buy a house, you're gonna it's it's gonna push a bubble in the housing market. It's not necessarily gonna inflate the prices of bananas artificially. But it still does, you know, get into the the real economy because you know, people will sell their house and they get money and they go and spend that money. They probably save it, save more that than they spend, but it's still going to cross over. So, you know, this is all good while, while you're making a bubble because your house price can go up and the bank can make sure that they meet demand because they just create that money. And so basically, home prices will get to the very limits of like, of people's ability to because a mortgage you got to pay your mortgage right and you can only earn so much money from doing work from producing so you're constrained by reality there and, and it gets right to the point where you know people are on the very edge of being able to pay back their loans and their mortgages and then something happens uh triggers a slowing in credit that just, just makes the G, uh, uh, gdp drop so it looks like a recession but actually it's just a slowing of credit but then, you know, you get falling asset prices and people jump off the bandwagon all of a sudden. And then that's what that looks like. So now, I'm, I've just produced something. And I earn the money from, from doing work. And then I pay back my home loan. Because now, and I'm spending more and more of my money doing that. That money doesn't then go to fund consumption. Because it's just, it's a bank deposit, so it's just, it's cancelling out on the balance sheet. It's not actually going into somebody else's pocket. And then they're spending it on consumption. So it's just, it's money destruction. But now, of course, everybody's producing and wanting to consume less. And destroying money, which doesn't fund consumption. So you can see how that's going to bog your economy down. Because everybody's producing more than they're going to consume. So how the hell do you sell your goods? How do businesses sell their goods? And then they've got to reduce their level of output. They've got to fire workers. And you can just see it's a real fuck up. It's, you know, it's not really a problem while you're blowing the bubble up. But once the bubble pops, it's a massive fuck up. So, yeah, you see, while the bubble's going, you're maximizing profit. Money creation's helping. And then the bubble pops and you, the companies and people are minimizing debt and destroying money. So, yeah, let's just go to this again. Now, say say instead of just creating bank deposits out of thin air, that they were giving you people savings. So I put, I earn money, half of it goes, I save, and the other half I consume, right? Then that money and the money of thousands of other people doing that gets lent to somebody to buy a house, right? So that means production has gone to, to form a loan, and that loan is consuming. So it's almost like 
I, I don't need to consume now, so I'll let somebody else who can't afford to consume what they want to use my money and later on they'll pay me back. And that's what banks used to do. They used to be intermediate, intermediaries between people and, and like uh, they would do maturity transformation. So I want short-term savings. Somebody else wants a long-term loan. And they just, you know, they make everyone work together. That was their role. But since end of the gold standard and you know it's just gone crazy really and it's unsustainable like it's gonna it's gonna fuck up so you know japan japan's been in stagnation for two decades now really um america the uk they're all pretty much just going into it where it's just low growth low interest rates and just can't seem to get the economy going it's just sort of trundles along but it's just not it's not getting better so you know that's unsustainable and there's going to be pressure for somebody to solve that problem uh, and get growth going now, it's going to be a political solution but the new consensus will reintroduce money scarcity but you, I think we've got to watch out for post-Keynesian modern monetary theory types um, because they want to give the government the power to create money, which is it's not necessarily a problem depending on how it's done. And if it's done, if it's done in a way so that government can create money so that it keeps inflation at a 2% target and then it has its secondary goals of full employment and blah, blah, blah then that's fine but you don't want to give the government the power to just create money because they will do it irresponsibly and then you'll get inflation and you'll get all sorts of things going on so it's got to be handled well but the new consensus has got to have money scarcity and and that all you know it feeds into politics and all sorts of things because you know it's it, it's your money system it's going to shape your economy it's going to shape politics it's going to shape society and and culture and it's going to shape everything so it's going to you know this new consensus will do something to bring that back then of course in australia i saw something the other day and it blew my mind but there's two and a half trillion aussie dollars in superannuation so that's like two and a half times our gdp so you get a lot of people who if you say you want to take the bank's power of creating money away they say, oh, well, there's not going to be enough credit and then it's, it's going to be hard to get loans and you'll have to wait years and years to get a loan and it'll be high interest rates. And But, I mean, look at that. That's, you know, superannuation is basically delayed consumption. So that means it's got to be consumed by people who are going to create more out of it. You know, like a business. If a business borrows money, it's con consuming it, but it produces goods and services that are more value than what they've consumed so you know all of that super is looking to be productive and people are saying oh there's not going to be enough credit it's like that's way more credit than you'll you'll fucking need so i mean if i think credit in australia is like 15 percent of gdp every year and i don't know what percentage of gdp goes into super but it's what it's 10 percent of employees salaries I know that you know that's not doesn't directly translate into 10% of GDP it'll be far less than that but super's been around for a number of years now so there's that head start going and then I suppose maybe they, it's good to have a bit of um, credit scarcity and therefore you, you're going to get much better returns on your super and on your savings and investments and things which is what you want right every day people working with their hands getting things done that's what you want and it's gonna it's gonna have an effect on the welfare state and you know free trade and fair trade arguments and you know if the, if the government or the reserve bank the government can't just get into uh, debt to fund itself um, and private debt can't get out of control. Well, the welfare state is going to be constrained because 
you're facing reality and you know it can be a safety net but not much more and that's fucking good unless you're a green haired lefty so like this the shift is probably Australia hasn't had its GFC I think a lot of people will say it hasn't or would avoided the GFC but uh it's it's got massive private debt it's got massive amounts of credit per year in the GDP so if there's something that slows credit it'll probably trigger a GFC in Australia um, obviously because you know Australia is a pretty small economy compared to America and Europe and what have you it's not going to you know send waves through the entire world but you know we'll no we'll definitely notice it then of course what will be in a, is a similar situation to Japan and America and the, the, the EU and the UK of having stagnation so that's what this this whole shift's going to be is you're going to have to solve stagnation and then prevent future bubbles because there's ways of solving the stagnation but you just if you do it in a way that's you know there's going to be more bubbles while bubbles pop and going to be stagnation again so yeah one of the things I came across and it's just you know googling monetary reform and what have you and then eventually you come across a word and, and the word was sovereign money and and yeah so because you know you, you got a lot of issues you go okay so we need to change the system but what do you do about all these bank deposits what do you do about all these central bank reserves and what about inflation and how you know what causes inflation the next thing you're looking at the 70s what was causing inflation there and then you get monetary theory uh monetarism which was Milton Friedman's big idea but I think in 2003 on in an interview he admitted that it didn't work because basically there's an amount of money and then there's money velocity and and if you're focusing on the amount of money uh well the velocity can slow down and it you know changes everything so anyway positive money is this group in the UK who want to campaign to have the monetary system changed from what it is now to what they call a sovereign money system and that would be that would take away the power of the banks to create money and would only give it to the central bank and I'll tell you a bit more about that a bit later but yeah so if you if you google Steve Keen or on YouTube he's got a channel you can watch a bunch of videos where he talks about this sort of thing where you know in Australia GDP is approximately a trillion dollars approximately 15% of that being fresh freshly created credit so let's say you get a 30% reduction in credit that looks like a 5% fall in GDP that's a recession and then you trigger that you know the bubble pops and then you trigger that whole money destruction process the minimizing of debt um fuck where is that thing going sure made a There we go, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is it. Bubble pops, that'll be when credit slows. And then you get your falling asset prices, but the asset liabilities stay stay on the balance sheet at the original amount. And so, you know, people get in, into a place where they've got to minimize their debt so that their balance sheet looks healthy. And there'll be households and people and there'll be firms and businesses and farmers and all sorts of things that will be affected and then you get that stagnation right so yeah if you find it go go to his youtube channel find the video about you know the gfc coming to australia and various other countries that avoided the gfc in 2007-8 um and he'll you know he's got a pretty good explanation of how credit is dangerous to have too much credit in in an economy uh and in stagnation there's a an american economist who i think was born in japan or something but he's been in america most of his life and so he 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 talks about the stagnation part of the equation very well he calls it a, a balance sheet recession um so yeah youtube him is plenty of videos you can watch about that 
uh, and, and he criticizes quant quantitative easing, QE. Because um, what QE is, is it's the central bank using creating reserves and then using those reserves to buy bonds and stock and stocks basically so it inflates it artificially inflates the, the price of those things so if you're the kind of person you know if you're in that section of society where you bought bonds and you've got stocks you're going to get, see a, an improvement and this QE is meant to then go and make these people feel wealthy, wealthy and they spend more and then it gets into the real economy. But it doesn't really do that. It just creates a bubble. Which is, you know, what all that um, bank ability to create loans that have just created bubbles. And the biggest one was the housing market bubble. And it becomes unsustainable and it's going to pop. And I, I don't really... I think Richard Koo's got a book out about how to solve stagnation and uh, Steve Keen who I mentioned just earlier he, he's keen on a modern debt jubilee which is basically to f forgive debts and you've got to be careful how this is done and obviously if it's not a good idea it's not going to happen because that's just how the world works but basically it's a you know try and fix your balance sheet so that people are back maximizing profit so this is the problem with QE, right? So in in the so the central bank sees that the economy is slowing down, there's stagnation because we've got to we've got to boost the economy. So how do we do that? We reduce interest rates so that people save less and spend more. And basically, they, they want to get banks lending more, which and lending is creating money, which caused the problem. So so with all this QE, they're trying to encourage, because they can't use the interest rate anymore. Because it's you know it's at zero or it's at one. You you can't get you can't get the economy going. So now you what do you do? This is their solution is QE. They go and they create money reserves, okay, reserve bank reserves, and then they go and buy these assets like bonds and stocks. Because they're trying to they're basically trying to get banks lending more and more lending creates more debt whereas what what you really need is more money and less debt and this is sort of what the sovereign money system does so instead of having bank deposits where you know a bank just lends you money for a home loan or whatever yeah there'll only be Basically, central bank uh, reserves, and that only they can create money. But then, how do they get the money into the economy? Right, because now that's done by banks lending to people. Okay, so. So they you stop banks from being able to create money, commercial banks. So only the state can create money. That's why it's called a sovereign money system. And, you, and I suppose it, it that you, this is you'd only trust this to work and pretty much the Anglosphere and maybe Europe because in, in those countries you would say that to a large extent the people are sovereign and that, and that creates the sovereign nation and so it's a trust trustworthy entity whereas you know in a struggling dictatorship you wouldn't want to give the state the ability to create money because they're just going to cause inflation and and fund their regime stupidly but so in this system central banks will control inflation by creating money and introducing it into the economy so rather than through interest rates which encourage or discourage banks lending so banks creating money and then you'd only have one type of digital money so that rather than having bank deposits and then the bank balances its books by buying or loaning central bank reserves and the central bank creating those reserves as they need to to meet demand you just have basically your central bank reserves there'd be no bank deposits so banks would they would go back to being intermediaries uh, and maturity transformation 
right? So how do you get this created money into the economy? So it would be given to the government. So you'd have like some committee of your national central bank and they would say, right, this is how much money needs to be created to hit our inflation target of 2%. Then they'd give that money to the government as funding. So you'd have, it would become government revenue basically. So they would have their revenue from taxation and then money creation. And then they can spend it. And they can spend it by a citizen's dividend. So that would just be like when the Rudd government gave every Aussie $1,000. Right. Um, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do this sort of thing in the current system. This would be just a disaster. It'd make things even worse. But... And then they can increase their government spending. So they go, okay, we've got this revenue from taxation, get this revenue, and then we can do a bunch more things, right? Or it can be a tax reduction. So this is a good one for conservative political parties, right? You can reduce tax and provide services and sort out uh, reducing debt in, in your economy and therefore speeding up the deleveraging process and then getting things back into a healthy configuration to go forward. Or you could indirectly finance lending to businesses, which would probably be giving it to banks and letting them lend at some cost to them so that they've got to, you know, make a profit. So if, if this is like a true cons new consensus in the way that What's that guy's name? James Pearson. He wrote Shattered Consensus. If, if it's a true change, like he thinks it is, you know, it's been 70 years since the uh, Great Depression and all of that. Well, he, he's just sort of noticed that when Jefferson got going, there were six terms of Democrats. Was it Democrats? Yeah. Then with Abe Lincoln and beyond, there were six terms of Republican government and then you had Roosevelt in the in the Great Recession and you had six and no, I think it was five terms of, of Democrat government again and then I think the first black first Republican back in the White House was Nixon and he's the guy that got rid of the gold standard so he obviously he'd stopped fighting for the old consensus and started fighting for the new consensus even though he's, you know, a Republican. And of course you get increasing social harmony because people come to agree, not, not necessarily consciously, but unconsciously with all the terms of the new consensus. Whereas now society is very polarized because people want to change things and there's people who just want to you know, keep doing what's not been working. And then of course, you'll probably, if you improve your monetary system, you're going to have prosperity and strength and all those good things. So, yeah, I just thought it would be pretty interesting and I'll put a bunch of links in, in the description so you can, you know, Positive Money's got a lot of like booklets and, uh, and a few videos. There's one really good one I watched, which was just basically a very clean presentation of what sovereign money would be and how it would differ from the contemporary system. Um, yeah, and I'll link to Steve Keen's, I'll find a Steve Keen video that would be appropriate, and Richard Koo. And yeah, I, I just thought this would be a good follow-up video to that Make Currency Scarce Again video I did, and I'll link to that as well. Just because I was very critical and, had, and didn't offer any solutions. And I spent the next couple of weeks just basically asking, you know, there are a lot of questions like, well, if we change it to that, well, then how would you do this and how would you do that? And what, what about inflation and what about bank runs and what about, you know, so you just wind up, because you've criticized something, you just wind up with a hundred, you know, criticisms on how to change it without fucking it up. And basically, like you always do, you just do a bunch of Googling and then you find... There are a bunch of blokes who've done that thinking before and they've done it to completion. And now you can just 
just grab their ideas and yeah so that's a lot of that positive money stuff is good if you're interested to read that yeah so there you go thanks for watching